Hello and welcome. Today I am going to demonstrate past plana vitrectomy for anterior segment surgeons. Now this is the latest development on our simulation software where we will teach anterior segment surgeons how to use the trocar cannula system and do vitrectomy through the past plana approach as well as through the limbal approach. This module consists of steps like viscoassisted fragment removal, injection of trocar system, vitrectomy through the past plana as well as through the limbal approach, cortex aspiration, insertion of a multi-piece lens in sulcus, and removal of the trocar. These steps can be done as discrete steps or through a continuous fashion which will help the trainee surgeon to understand the basic concepts of past plana vitrectomy for anterior segment surgeons. Let's take you through each of these steps one by one through this demonstration. I gently enter the incision. There are training tools that guide me uh, inside the anterior chamber. I push visco and slowly withdraw the cannula so that the nucleus fragment comes out of the anterior chamber. So I select the, the colibri forceps to stabilize the group. Uh, you can see there is a cone uh, which is a training tool which helps us guide uh, the distance and the angle with which the trocar cannula system should be inserted inside the globe. It is coming at a distance of 3.5 to 4 mm away from the limbus. So the first angle of entry is what the cone guides you. So if we do that right, the cone then asks us to change the angle and then insert the trocar cannula system inside the globe. Once that is done, uh, we stabilize the globe with the colibri forceps and remove the trocar. It is almost always necessary to insert the trocar rightly through the correct angle. Otherwise, if it's not gone at the correct angle, it will cause damage to the structures within the eye, especially uh, to the retina and the sclera beneath it. So let's see, after this step is done, the performance data will indicate how well we have done this step. It will, based on the criteria that we have set, labels this step as being satisfactory or unsatisfactory. So it tells us what was the distance of the trocar from the limbus, how was the first angle of entry, whether it was good, what was the second angle of entry, and whether your trocar was seated completely, perfectly on the sclera. So that uh, we start this step. The step will load with the cannula in place. Uh, there will be vitreous stands inside the anterior chamber, and uh, we will be using our foot pedal in this case. So let's start. Uh, I first insert the irrigation cannula in the left paracentesis and then introduce the vitrectomy cutter through the cannula. You can see the cannula being introduced and visualize it behind the posterior capsule in the Burgess space. We start the vitrectomy cutter using the foot pedal. Uh, the vitreous is stained by triamcinolone acetonide and that's why it is whitish in color. You can see the clearance of the vitreous when the cutter is moved in the vitreous uh, space closer to the posterior capsule. Uh, care is taken not to damage the posterior capsule further with the vitreous cutter, uh, but there are chances that it might extend. Uh, the simulator picks up these small movements also. It will uh, indicate with alerts saying that you are closer to the posterior capsule and keep away. This parse planar route is important for anterior segment surgeons also, so that we cut the vitreous at its uh, origin in the PCR and that does not cause any further damage or traction on the retina. Once we have removed sufficient vitreous from the past plan approach, we can use the limbal approach as well to remove the strands which are free floating into the anterior chamber. Some of them are causing peaking of the pupil which need to be removed. Some of them are causing uh, damage to the incisions. Some of them are causing them to cause peaking towards the incisions which need to be removed as well. So we can use this vitreous cutter efficiently closer in the bag, remove all the vitreous strands as long as we stay away from the iris because if we use the cutter closer to the iris it might cause release of pigment sometimes or it can even cause damage to the iris or create a hole within the iris which should be avoided in all circumstances. Care has to be taken while doing this step because we might damage the anterior capsular rim with the cutter. The cutter is going to be used in the eye cut mode. So when I first push the foot pedal, it will be on aspiration mode and if I push it further down, it will be on cutting mode. I insert the irrigation cannula through the left paracentesis and uh, the cutter through the right paracentesis. I press the foot pedal and slowly start engaging the cortex, bring it to the center and aspirate more. I am taking care not to extend the PCR. Uh, I remove the cortex clock hour by clock hour. 
uh, one by one, bring it to the center and aspirate more. Uh, I reach all the clock hours slowly, uh, taking care not to do more aspiration when I come closer to the posterior capsular rupture. Uh, chances are that it might still extend, but we have to be careful. I slowly start injecting this lens. You can see the lens now coming out to the injector. First is the leading haptic. We have to ensure that the leading haptic is placed within the sulcus and then we start injecting so that the trailing haptic also is delivered as per like our liking. The haptics are delivered. You can see that the lens is nicely delivered with the trailing haptic inside, uh, outside the eye. We have to dial it inside and ensure that once we have dialed this, the trailing haptics is now uh, placed correctly inside the sulcus so that it stays in the sulcus fixated lens. So I am going to use a Sinsky hook also in my right hand which will help me to dial this lens correctly in place. We can do this either through the main incision or through the paracentesis taking care not to damage or touch any of the structures like in this case we ended up dialing the lens correctly inside the sulcus. We have to position the lens correctly so that it stays over the rexis margin and dial it well inside the sulcus. Uh, the lens sits correctly inside the sulcus. After this is done, we, we take uh, a colibri forceps uh, in the left hand or in the right hand whichever you feel is comfortable to remove this cannula and that is the end of the surgical step uh, where we remove the, the cannula from the position and that is the end of this step. Now these steps can be done individually uh, or they can be done in a continuous fashion beginning with visco assisted fragment removal until the end where you implant a multi-piece lens in sulcus and remove the cannula. This step will help anterior segment surgeons learn the basics of pars plana vitrectomy using the vitrectomy cutter and the irrigation cannula and cleanup of the vitreous strands through the pars plana approach as well as the through the limbal approach. I thank you for your attention.